Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Insider News, sponsored by Jarvis Insurance. We really appreciate their patronage. We couldn't do it without them. I'm your host, Jeffrey Winterstein, and I couldn't be more excited about what we're talking today, which is Poland, Poland, Poland. We're going to talk about a little bit about the... Um, what the changes that are happening in the spring. And then, of course, I just got back from the Polish Nationals, the Polish Arabian Horse Days, the auctions. We're going to talk about that. For those of you that don't know me, let me explain for full disclosure, I absolutely love Poland. I went there in 1995 with my parents for the first time. I actually worked for Polish Prestige, which was the precursor to Pride of Poland in 1999, writing uh, English write-ups for the webpage for the for the sale horses, and then started with Pride of Poland, doing some writing, and then joined the auction team in 2010. And we are going to be joined by two of my very dear friends, Scott Benjamin and Anna Stoyanowska, and we've got two challenges today. I am not nearly as technologically versed as my Italian partner, Francesca Aranio, so I've got to get those two onto this call, and then we're going to be away and running with this very special um, episode about Poland. Let me try to bring those guys up. Just bear with me a little bit. Scott, you're here. I am. Oh. Trying to get on. Hang on just a second. There, I've got her invited too. Okay. I can't quite see her yet. Buffering. Anna, welcome. You did it. Did you hear? <laughs> Anna, say something so we know that you can, we can hear you. No. Uh oh. We might have a little bit of volume problem with Anna. Can you make sure that your your, um, your volume is turned on? The full disclosure, we just got Anna on Instagram at about eight o'clock my time. I'm in the US, she's in Warsaw. We just got her on Instagram for the first time. She does no social media. So this is a big technological step for her. <laughs> I'm starting out, Scott. Well, this uh, this will maybe be her last um, attempt with uh, social media, so we'll give her just a second. And Scott, you're in Australia right now, is that correct? The truly global event. That yeah. You could, uh... <laughs> and I'm in the U.S., so it's morning here. We've got the sunshine poured in. Anna, can you hear us now? Can you say something, Anna? Anna, just can. Can you just speak if you hear me? Maybe Ariane is uh, helping us with the uh, Arabian Insider team. She'll try to uh, get her up and running. Uh, Anna, can you hear us? Hmm. Let me see if... Uh... In the meantime, Scott, why don't we start as a little bit of an introduction with you. Tell us a little bit about your Arabian horse experience and more importantly, talk to us a little bit about um, your experiences in Poland and how it's relevant for Poland for you. I'd be happy to. So I have been involved with the Arabian horse for the vast majority of my life. I was, I grew up on a farm in, in central Illinois. Um, I was a child of the Midwest and we had always had lots of when in, in before my 10th birthday, my father thought horses need to be a part of our lives. And, and like most animals, I fell in love quite quickly. I followed that pursuit to university. I studied as an animal scientist. And in my final year of university, I was trying to do, I was very interested and motivated by breeding and genetics and, and found my way to Poland. And it was 1991, it was right after the fall of the ball. Poland, of course, was on, on a new incline after the reset of the global industry. And it was an experience that changed my life. So I, I did a senior thesis in 1991, went back and took a full-time job at Michal, 
1992 and worked there until the end of 1995. So I was in about five years of experience working in Poland, and then I came back to be a part of the Pride of Poland team when they when they re um, booted the whole concept of the sale and the auction and launched what's now known as Polish Arabian Horse Days in 2001 with Pol Turf and Barbara Mazur and Pavel Gospodski and of course Anya who has been my friend since the early 90s as well and don't tell so anyone how long we know each other Anya, we have no choice but to sort of give away our age so yeah, my experience in Poland dates back 33 years and my experience with the breed is, is um, somewhere between 45 and 50. So it is something that I do this for a living. It consumes my life and it is such a refreshing uh, breath of fresh air to be back in Poland with the people that I love and the horses that I love in a country that I love and where my heart was left 33 years ago from nearly the first week that I arrived. So that's my short story of, of Poland. Anna, I guess you have joined us. You can now hear yeah. us and everything. Yeah, and I, now I can hear you. I, I, I don't know why I lost uh, the voice. I it just, I saw you guys, but I couldn't hear you and I couldn't talk. Well, what Scott said is so nice. We, we, we were young and beautiful and now we can keep on the end. <laughs> Yeah, just and, but that's okay. We're okay with that. <laughs> tell us, Anna, tell us a little bit. Scott just uh, finished up with his experience. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience with Poland. Obviously, you're Polish, you live in Warsaw, but give everybody just a little bit of a background. Well, my my story with the Arabian horses start, uh, started since I met Isabella Zawadzka. I was not very... Uh, <clears throat> fan of Arabian horses. I was with the Warmbloods and Thoroughbreds, finishing the Agricultural Academy and thinking about going somewhere to work with the, to, to the state stats. And I was, I grew up with the idea that the serious breeding and, and the best breeding uh, belongs to the state stat as they can keep the, the programs uh, without concerning about uh, but, human lives. So it doesn't matter what happened with the people who are involved with this breeding at status quo of these places were kept. So <clears throat> I was thinking about um, going after my study to one of this state start. First choice was Jaroszówka and maybe Yvale Vista. And then I met Isabella and she said, why not Arabian horses? And I said, no, I don't want to go to Arabian horses. I don't know nothing about it. And she said, um, give me a little bit of time. I will try to explain you how it works. And then. <laughs> and what, explain a little bit about your role when, because you basically took over from Isabella. What was your role then? Yeah, well, at this time, it was a beginning of a big transformation in a Polish politic. And it was beginning of 90s, 93, 94. Um, Poland become an uh, independent country out of communism regime and also a formal legal state of status of the state start has changed. I mean, from the fully subsidized by the government companies, they became, became um, limited liabilities companies with 100% of shares belonging to the government. So um, that change um, has changed everything, not only legal wise, but also those those companies um, were since that time acting as a typical um, limited liability companies without any help from the government. And it were it was a crucial moment for this that and uh, <clears throat> of course of course, um, a situation of, of Arabian horses and, and uh, four at this moment, that was Janov, Michalov, Bialka and Kurozvenki. Um, what, what, the situ economical situation of these places were the best because we were in a moment when the sale, Polish prestige sale at this time was fam worldwide famous and the people were coming to Poland, visiting Poland, and believing in the Polish breeding. And I must say that Arabian horses were always lucky with the people. Yeah. 
Go ahead. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, I grew up uh, as an assistant of Isabella for years, and when uh, <clears throat> she gets retired, I took her place. Mm -hmm. Then you're maybe be best to answer this next question because there's been some changes this spring. Um, can you explain what's what's happened this last spring? Kind of bring everybody up to speed with the state studs, and particularly the roles with um, Marek Chela and Jerzy Bialbach. Actually, this this changes has started before because it was hardly connected with the political changes in Poland. Um, the leading party, which was for last year, uh, eight years, peace, lost the election, and on the beginning of October, another party took uh, the leadership in Poland, and uh, all, all the changes have started as the well. As stats are, are connected to the government, uh, especially Arabian horses uh, were uh, became kind of, especially Yanov, kind of symbol of this eight years of darkness which happened last time uh, under a peace peace control and the leadership. Uh, one of the, I don't want to say say first, but one of the very, on the beginning of the changes, uh, uh, which happened, um, were dedicated to, to Arabian stats. So uh, the, the previous directors, as previous director of, of Janusz Podlaski uh, left. <clears throat> and three of us, Marek Trela, Jerzy Białobok and myself, we were asked if we can come and help to 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 change something and to bring again a a pride a trust and the power to the Polish Arabian horse breeding and you know eight years nearly decade it's a lot of time in a human mm -hmm. being so yeah. none of us were at the same place of our life like eight years before. So it was not an easy decision. Like, yeah, we are back. We are jumping with our head down and yeah, 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 we are coming. Of course, nobody said no, but it was not an easy de decision. And we, we, we couldn't say that we will be back on the same position and on the same role like, like it was before. We were older and we changed that. As well, we are not the same. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Could you explain specifically, though? But you you came back to help, but it's not in the same roles that you were. Before. No, no, no. Um, um, uh, before I was employed by the agricultural um, agency, who was um, um, the hundred percent of shares of the estates that belong to the. Uh, government and controlling uh, and were controlling by the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Agriculture were controlling the stats through the agency. So I was employed by the agriculture agency as a chief specialist, not only for Arabian st uh, stats, but also some others. Marek was, of course, director of Janusz Podlaski and Jerzy Bialobok was the director of Nihal stats. So, um, I said on the beginning that I don't want to be back on the same position. I don't want to be, be um, an inspector, like we call it in Poland, for the uh, states that anymore, because I'm doing something else in my life and I not cannot lock it and mm. come back again. And I don't want to be anymore at the same situation like I was eight years ago, that from one day to the other, um, my life has changed completely. And not only my life, but also my family. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not a matter that it was done, but the way they did it mm -hmm. stay in my head forever. So, um, yeah, well, at the end, making the story shorter, we are back. I'm, I'm as a, uh, I, myself as an advisor uh, of, for Arabian horse breeding. Marek, as an advisor to me, to Janusz Podlaski, that he can help and, and advice with the breeding program mm -hmm. and after really deep arguing with uh, with george b yellow he finally accepts 
to be a member of the board and vice director of of uh, Michal working together with Monica Swovic. Okay. But the resistance of Bialbach was not his resistance to do anything. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> he. I mean, he has a great love for Michal. I mean, that's his passion. Oh, well, he wanted well, to, you know, do everything. Of course, you know, all of us were completely crazy about the what we were doing and all uh yellow box heart belonged to me yeah, how yeah. All his life was dedicated to the start yeah, absolutely and resistance plan was not because he didn't want to do it but he said i'm too old yeah. to do it <laughs> yeah yeah has gone and i don't know if if i can just take this responsibility again yeah, on yeah, my yeah. arms yeah yeah and so. run this this um farm again but yeah <clears throat> pushing, 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 asking, asking, and finally, it's like, okay, let's Scott, try. Scott, let's go, let's talk about um, two weeks ago, um, Arabian, uh, Polish Arabian Horse Days was brought back. It used to be that way prior, and then it turned into a sale and a national championships, and now it's Polish Arabian Horse Days. Can you talk us a little bit about what Polish Arabian Horse Days is and why it was brought back? Can so the the whole concept of that annual summer event, which began 55 years ago, with an auction in Yanopolski in 1970, um, then morphed into a, a multi-day event when the national show was added in 1979. So Poland's been running sort of joint events together since well. 45 plus years, right? So um, when the when the it existed under the banner of Polish prestige for the long time, and it was just Poland in August, and so they finally decided on August as a as a suitable month to, to hold that event. It had bounced around in the different summer months prior to that. But the concept when when the when Polterf took over in the in the new millennium and the event was the auction was rebranded as the Pride of Poland and the the so the silent sale evolved into a secondary sale, which is now called the summer sale. And the Polish nationals began to expand from one simple day of shows and three championships to six championships, including yearlings and stud breeding stud parades. And, and it became a very internationally attended event. The, the entire concept got wrapped it up into what is a very appropriate name for the event, which is Polish Arabian Horse Days, because that's truly what's being celebrated. Yes, the has always been the anchor, especially Pride of Poland and in all its iterations, but it, it's so much more than that. It's a celebration of, of the horse and the history. The show the is, is program. the breeding program. Like still, you go from celebrating these horses, the best of the of the current of the current generations from year up until you know, I think the oldest horse at the show was 19. Actually, the oldest horse at the show was Ganges at 30, receiving the Wahoo Trophy, mm -hmm. which was in this moment. Um, but it's it's from celebrating those show horses to to finding new homes for horses that we believe in as sale horses, to then sitting down and listening to the breeders themselves talk about their own horses during the breeding parade. So it's a five day event that's really encompasses the entire history and we wanted to bring that history back. Some of the things had been lost during the eight years of transition um, and it had become really focused on sales and a show rather than celebrating the Polish Arabian horse and celebrating the people that have that make that pilgrimage to Poland every year and are part of its history. They've taken whether they've taken a horse home, and the vast majority of them have over time taken some Polish horse home or bred to a Polish horse and have those that incorporated into mm -hmm. the program into their life. But we also have a group of people that come and just attend because they want to be a part of it. Like Anya said, there's something special about the state studs. Poland is really the last, they're the last Arabian state studs actively breeding horses of consequence in the world, right? All the other ones that we've known in in Tiersk and the Yaguar Meladar in, in in Spain and Pompadour and all of those all of those places are even Marbach still exists more as more of a living museum than it does as an active an active consequential state stud breeding program. And the the importance of the state studs for our breed worldwide cannot be overstated. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely 
Joel, like Anya said, that there is some, there's a, exists a program with a mission and with the best of the breed in mind that will continue on generation after generation based on a fundamental responsibility and dedication to what's best for the Arabian breed. And so that was interrupted for eight years. And so now, as we'll talk about in this call, it's now the responsibility of, of the, the three guardians that have come back to fulfill part of their responsibility that was taken away from them to sort of ensure that this treasure, this, this national treasure of Poland, but truly this treasure for our breed worldwide has the best chance to succeed for several more generations and as, as far as it, it can exist into the future. So sorry, long explanation of Polish Arabian horse. <laughs> But, well, let's dig into it a little bit. I, I, in the pre-call, Anna, when we were trying to get you up, up to speed on social media in, uh, you know, in an hour, we were talking about Polish nationals. And um, you talked about a Polish national. Last year, it was inside. And there was, there was various reasons for doing it. But this year, it was moved back outside. Explain a little bit the, the importance of Polish nationals and why it needs to be on grass. Uh, well... <laughs> Polish Arabian horses are very specific and different from the other kind of Arabian horses. And uh, a Polish breeding program, of course, want to follow the international fashion and want to follow what the market needs, but not for any price. So uh, we still have some, uh, I don't want to say a pr problem, but not all of our horses has a extremely dishy heads, but what Polish horses definitely have, it's a great movement. And uh, this look and presence and proud, which they can show up and they show up def uh, definitely better outside than inside. So we did it. Um, we moved back to the, to the idea of showing them on the, on the, during the championships outside to show all these attitudes of, of Polish horses. And what Scott said that um, in the past, when um, the smarter than us created this idea of combining uh, a sale and the, and the show together, the idea itself was really great to first to give the people a chance to purchase the horses of their dreams. And secondly, to show them up where these horses come from, why they are good and where, what are the the generations which create this this, uh, this the, the horses like this? So, um, yeah, basically that was the idea too. And it, we also followed the suggestion of of breeders and handlers. Uh, that I got uh, hundreds of of phone calls asking, could you please um, move this this championships out and and can we show our horses outside? And um, you can see. I, I said during the, especially for the Sunday finals, that uh, a judges' courses should be uh, definitely run in, uh, during the Polish nationals. If we want, we, we want to show the people how the Arabian horses should move like. They mm -hmm. should. <laughs> what is it? Can, can, Scott, I, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, part of. It, 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 as wonderful as the, as the indoor arena is that was purposely built, built to, to have a, a world-class venue where we could host if the weather wasn't so fantastic. And then it turned out to be a great way to create atmosphere for, for the auction in the new millennium. That outdoor arena that is, was purposely created right next to the, the indoor arena was, was created for that purpose, to host that show, to, to, to feature those horses outside where they look amazing. And it was, we all have so many wonderful memories of horses performing on that grass area and previously in the, in the grass area that was out closer to Voronsovska stable. But the, to, to see those brood mares, and it was really brood mares with foals at side come out in those senior mare classes and walk up to the to the in gate happy and calm and relaxed and not overly animated and trot into that ring and carry themselves the way 
that a horse carries themselves because every single muscle and bone in their body were working in harmony from the top of their pole to the end of their tail as they trotted around the ring. And, you know, there were lots of 20s given away for movement justifiably. And, and, the, and it was just a wonderful way to see the horse naturally expressing itself as the Arabian horse should. And, and a lot, I, a lot of space to, to trot. Believe well, me, they are, we they are had a long way. Enormous arena, which we hadn't planned on. But in when we all looked at it on day one, we thought this arena is way too big. But by the end of the show, we thought actually the 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 the, the broodmares proved us um, wrong. In fact, the arena was just perfect to mm -hmm. have and the Poganinkas and the Omarellas trot around that ring like they owned it, and they absolutely did. And it was a really beautiful display to, for the spectators, for the judges, for the breeders themselves, to just sort of see the Arabian horse at its best. And it reminded all of us of where we need to keep heading with the Polish breeding program, that those attributes that Anya talked about, the movement and the bodies and the feet and legs and the way those horses move harmoniously there's no it's so natural for them to be able to do that they're not training those brood mares on a daily basis i can assure you those mares know how to do that when they're asked to do it and they're not intimidated to do it and those horses just come in and express the joy the natural joy and the beauty that has made the polish arabian special and continues to make them special um for decades and hopefully for decades into the future thanks God. There's, uh, we any opinion from the handlers and trainers who have to trot all this <laughs> or maybe you did guys being on the on the collecting ring but yeah fully what was a new they kept running like they never they never complained as, as long as the mayor shot they kept running alongside them which was fantastic even on sunday <laughs> i would like to add to a perspective that i was reminded of this year at polish nationals i go to a lot of horse shows with arabian insider and i'm i'm very fortunate to have all the credentials and the access and everything like that but there was there was something different about this it was just the casualness and acceptance and you could go wherever and everyone was just kind of from the dcs to the ringmasters everyone was just kind of enjoying the show rather than trying to make sure everyone was in position and you go here and you go there and and even the handlers were coming up to watch each thing i don't know there was just maybe it's my own personal bias and i admit i have a ton but it was just so relaxed and so fun just to kind of enjoy horses being shown with your friends it, it seemed that way to me as opposed to other horse shows what really amazed me that um in the same class uh, the handlers and the helpers which were uh, not really a conqueror yeah. each other they helped each other yeah. really happy and uh, the audience sitting on the on the uh, on their chairs they were really uh screaming yelling clapping yeah. uh, re reacting like crazy so uh, that was special. Yeah. And it, okay, let's move on. Let's, oh, go ahead. No, no, you move on. You move okay. On um, we're going to try to keep this under an hour, and I know everyone, uh, <laughs> we, we, we could sit there and talk for hours, but we need to keep moving. Let's talk a little bit about the auction. I know that, you know, for right or wrong, the auction was a little bit of the barometer of the success of Poland, but it, it's really kind of the, the final thing. There's so much more that goes into it before you get to that final, uh, final number. And you guys purposely pared down the auction this year. Talk a little bit about the strategy for the auction. And, and um, first of all, the strategy, and let's just talk about um, what your thoughts were after it. Um. You know, when we start uh, to talk about the sale itself, it was beginning or middle of April, and we ask, um, and we we've been asked from, from Cobb if there is any sense to do the sale this year, because to organize this this auction this year, uh, because the situation at um, at the start it's not um, that easy, and we were worried. If if we can create a list of horses which keep any interest and attention from from uh, the buyers so finally 
well the decision was made that we are going to to organize this auction and but we knew i mean a group team organizing committee that uh, we have to create a very short list mm-hmm. and and uh, we we try to we will try to build this list from uh, the horses which we can offer today without any loss for the staff. So we knew that it will be not so it not so many superstars, and the expectations which were huge on the beginning uh, um, are much too too high, and we knew that the the, the record price. It's never happened in this, this year. So um, it was a combination between to find a balance between what we can offer and what we can do, and and, and, and but in find a balance between the combination what we can offer and what the market expects. So, of course, always expectations are are <laughs> through the roof. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Your comment, Scott. So, the as I said, the, the the reason people come to Poland and have been coming to Poland for 55 years in the summertime is because of an auction. So, the auction is very consequential. There's no doubt about it. And when the discussion began in April, April, mind you, to organize an auction, and we used to have a sales list out at the beginning of each calendar Yeah. Pro- we were already thinking about what was being sold in October after the August auction for the for the following year, so that we had an incredibly short time frame to try to pull together something special. And like Anya said, you know, it it was it was it was never intended to be the kind of auction where it was going to set any sort of record prices. Um, there were several auctions that happened during the last eight years where it was easy to sell high quality horses that were in demand. Um, and but now the state says they're in a position where they need to try to retain as many high quality horses as they can to shore up the future generation still offering horses that are attractive and and of course we're all coming back in to the to an an auction situation that we used to understand quite well uh, it would change every year the dynamic would change but because we were always in it we could go with the flow and so Poland for me had always been the most reliable place to buy a high quality brood mare with an exceptional pedigree and a proven breeding record at a reasonable price for sure and so I had entered this year, 2024, having not been to Pride of Poland since 2015, with the idea that people still wanted broodmares. And that's not the clientele that showed up. The clientele that showed up wanted show horses, and they wanted young show horses. Mm-hmm. And they were exotic show horses, which Poland has a handful for sure. And they, they're still breeding horses that are really beautiful and very relevant. But the, the idea of someone not appreciating, appreciating a well-bred broodmare was a bit of a surprise to me. And maybe those, maybe those those bidders that we had in the past, um, uh, they've stepped away from Poland because of the changes and we'd like to invite them back in the future. But it, I think it's, there's a, the challenge now sits for us as an organizing group and as someone who cares about the future of the Polish Arabian horse is how do we collectively entice the, the people that matter around the world that want to inc- incorporate the Polish Arabian horse into their breeding programs and their show programs and their future success so that we're offering the kind of horses that appeal to them at public auction, because it's important to do that and not and not offer them privately and, and take away from the appeal of all of that. Um, but also to try to, you know, to try to maintain quality bloodstock for the, for the, for the studs as well, without having to sacrifice something um, like some of the horses that sold in the past eight years that we'd be happy to have back if, if those decisions had been made differently. So it's 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 trying to find that balance in the end. So certainly expectations um, were higher. I'll, I'll say that, but I think that the re- sale results were realistic in the end. We had anticipated selling more horses, I think, um, but once we understood that the broodmare market is is a bit, it's either saturated or it's a bit broken or it's a bit. I, I don't I don't know quite. I'm going to spend a lot of time over the next 
six to 12 months trying to figure out what's happened to the global broodmare market. But it, it, it makes me, um, it, 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 uh, it gives me reason to be concerned about where we're headed as a breed if, if quality broodmares don't have value in our mm -hmm. breed. Certainly can't continue to create the next generation of this breed from a small group of elite mares around the world who are producing embryos and mm -hmm. show horses. Like we need more genetic diversity than that. And Poland is one of those places, I won't say one of the few places, but one of those reliable places where you can find well-bred brood mares mm -hmm. that can do to produce horses that have sold in past years, continue to produce quality horses with all sorts of bloodlines in breeding programs throughout the Middle East and, and around the world. So the, the track record of success is there. I just, I think we need to remind people that, hey, affordable, well-bred broodmares are here available. Mm -hmm. Add something special to your own breeding program. If I may add something for this Polish auction for many years um, was uh, like a mirror show showing how the market for Arabian horses looks like. And it's happened this year as well. At least this, this auction show up, how this market look, what they it will look like, what clients are searching for and what Scott said. We know now that there is nearly no market for the Rudner. Even those good ones, the best ones, the people uh, are more interested in buying a uh, show horses, young ones, a uh, show prospects. Mm -hmm. And that was also an answer and a lesson for us that creating that list, maybe we should be more focused on for now mm -hmm. on other horses. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were definitely not fighting for uh, price records and the easiest way uh, how to make this sale, this auction successful is to sell the, the superstars, but there is not many left at this table. So we have to keep them at home mm -hmm. and, and um, keep them for a next, next generation. This is why, mm -hmm. but as God said, this, the prices were realistic and they were honest. And this is uh, uh, also an answer how uh, the, the word is estimating now and, and valuating the Polish horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's, let's um, I think what part and parcel to that is actually the breeding parades, because it was always my contention that the breeding parades helped develop that demand for these horses. It was always my favorite part of Polish Arabian horse days. Maybe it's because the work was over and the stress was done. <laughs> I could just sit back and relax. <laughs> but um, Todd, let's talk talk about the breeding parades. They, they haven't been done for quite a few years. And I, I honestly don't think people were kind of expecting, like, you know, because if they haven't been there for, if they weren't there a decade ago, they didn't understand that now you get to see new foals and brood mares. And that's where you kind of start to get your allegiance to these mares, you know, like you start to love Alba Gova. And so you start to love her daughters and maybe you get a granddaughter at some point. I mean, that's really where this takes off on. So let's talk about the breeding parades and how important did you think it was, let's start with Scott, about putting them back into the, uh, into the play. <laughs> I, it was, we talked about breeding parades when we, when we began to, to, to flesh the concept out again in April. And, and to me, they're essential. I think what's so magical about those breeding parades is not only do you get to see the horses that didn't get shown at the horse show or didn't get sold, you get, you get to understand, you begin to have a feeling as these beautiful mares and these young foals and these young fillies coming in the, and, the, and the stallions, that there's still so much depth in the breeding program, right? And that there's, and while there's reason to be concerned about the future, there's a lot, there's still so much hope there as these mares mm -hmm. continue mare after mare after mare. And you realize that these families are still really well represented. And, and to hear about these horses from the breeders themselves is also one of those magical experiences that you understand. These are the people that live with these horses every day that, um, you know, in the case of, of Madek, who was back on the microphone in Jan Fedlowski, so many of those generations before those horses, and including several so that were bred by him and created by him. And there's so much investment 
into the generations that get us there. You know, you speak about Albie Gova, she's now back in, you know, six, seven generations mm -hmm. deep in some of these horses. That, <laughs> and that's really astounding to think about. So I, I just, to me, they, they, they're the perfect way to bookend Polish Arabian horse days because we're way past the excitement of the Polish national show and the, and the thrill of that and the, and the inevitable height that has to surround the auctions, right? Now we're here just people, appreciate breeders, owners, horse lovers, appreciating generations of commitment that started back when Poland became a republic in 1918 mm -hmm. at these days. And with all those aristocratic, aristocratic breeders prior to that, bringing horses directly from the desert, this is the fruit. These are the fruits of their labor, right? That have now um, generations before have influenced breeding programs around the world. And we're getting to see the future of what Poland has to, to hold for us all. And it it's just so rewarding. Yes, you get some superstars. You know, it's it was nice to end the Michal breeding parade with Andoria at 20 years of age, you know, the most decorated horse show or show horse in the world. Um, but it was just as wonderful to see some new foal come out beside a mare that nobody knew and see the promise in, in that next generation and to know that the Polish state studs are still in good hands and that there's still so much promise for the next generation. And also one of the major roles of the state stud is education and nobody, I think, discover a better way how to learn something is to see what uh, happened on the closest neighborhood what kind of mistakes or successes your neighbors did so watching this combination and the falls coming with the mothers and the youngsters and the, as scott said uh, uh, generations uh, which were born at Janov and Michalov for uh, for me, if, if as a breeder, it is the best way and a fantastic perspective how to get something back and how to learn what can I do at my home breeding to um, did something good or to avoid the mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, Scott asked me a nerd. He said I'm a Polish nerd for wanting to, to know this, but <laughs> Janov, there's a breeding parade at Janov and then at Michalf, which was traditional, but we've also used to go to Bialka. Bialka was still represented at the sale. They still showed the show. Can you, can you explain a little bit? I know people, some of the other Polish nerds, I think there's two or three of us out there. Talk about Bialka, just very quickly what their status is and um, what's going on with Bialka. Well, it's actually a specific Polish um, reality. Um, uh, three decades ago, uh, when these political changes moved Polish state stat to another legal position and they become limited liability companies, they, uh, the government create also a list of strategic companies with the, well, the special importance for, for Poland. And it was also a state stat and it was three Arabians, Arabian stats, Janusz, Michał and Białka. And that was kind of um, program which um, guaranteed a protection of the pool of genes and the, the um, a breeding program which was um, which was created at these farms. And I think it was two years ago, uh, the, well, the, the previous government decided to move Białka from this list of, of strategic companies. And uh, legal-wise, Białka is, belongs to the government. 100% of shares belongs to the government, but they are under other ministry right mm -hmm. now. <clears throat> and... Um, well, they are not under this pro mm -hmm. umbrella of uh, protection. They are not on this strategic list anymore. But we really hope that Bielka will be back to this program and will be next year included with all this visit mm -hmm. parade. And, and um, yeah. yeah, I hope so too. Bielka is a spell. I love going to Bielka. It's a special place. So. It is a special place. So let's, let's talk about the future. Can I just hear your thoughts kind of um, 
auction, Polish Arabian horse days, however you want to take it. And I realize this is very broad, but just kind of what do you think the challenges are um, and what do you see the moving forward in the future that um, we can set some realistic expectations for, for Poland? Well, the major question is, is a coming uh, breeding program and a breeding season. For all of us, it, it's a question mark what we should introduce, what kind of stallions we should introduce for, for, well, it's the same question which all of the breeders are asking themselves. So, um, yeah, we are really working and thinking what, what kind of stallions we should introduce to the Polish breeding program and uh, uh, how we should follow this uh, uh, really high world standard of Arabian horses today. It's, it's not an easy, it's not an easy to reach the top uh, mm -hmm. and even if, if, if more difficult to stay on this top. So we have to climb up again and, and we have to find a way how to breed a, a good horses and to compete and to show up that Poland, Poland is still a valuable player in this world. But we've just had, we would say though that you, there, do, you, do you think that the foundation is still there, that there's still... Um, oh, definitely. I understand you need to do it, but uh, you, you have, there's some hope there, correct? No, it definitely is, yes, yes. Um, yes, it, it was clearly shown up also during the seniors, senior mayor classes that uh, there is still um, a group of Broodmares, which you can find never in, uh, in the world except Poland. Mm. And, but the, the 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 major question is what kind of stallions we should use for these mares. And uh, what I think that, um, as I said on the beginning of our meeting, that, that the time has changed and we are older. What we were used to uh, build before that. At what was possible to uh, to do it's to invite Italians which produce a group of of foals which were um, like a, a stamp of of his activity in the, uh, at the states that like what monogram did what what Gazala Shakab did what some other Italians uh, does um, I'm afraid that it's not possible anymore to bring one stallion which we mm -hmm. can use for 50, 60, 70 mares anymore. Also, because during these eight years, the genetic pool has changed a lot and the, these pedigrees are not so... Predictable. Uh, yeah, predictable. That's the... Mm -hmm. the yeah. Anymore. Scott? Yeah, I would agree with Anya. There, 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 was a, there was a homogeneity, to use a big word, in, in used by the poles over the years that started way back in the 50s and 60s when there were groups of Vitrash daughters and Vyoki Shlem daughters and Amr Steve daughters and then there were Proba. Nabor daughters, Celibus daughters and Bandas and the Eucalyptus and so there were there were these these types and this consistency of sires that helped to create sort of a look right so now the challenge is as Anya said yes there are still I mean, the, the monogram daughters, there's a couple still alive, but they're way past their breeding prime, yeah. right? Um, yeah. The daughters are now, you know, the youngest ones are 20 years old. The Cahill daughters are still, they're starting to become the senior mares. And the, and right now it's the Ascot daughters and the Empire daughters and the and other mares and the Elamari daughters that are, that are sort of the heart of that program. But the challenge now in the next few years will to be take, will to, will be to take what's the best of what was created in in the last eight years which is very mixed it's as mixed a group of horses they probably inherited since since the repatriation of the horses after world war ii in terms of trying to find out how do we move these how do we move these horses positively forward there was a wise there was some wise conversation that happened after the spring inspection in may about about the reality of where we are you know what do we have where do we need to go um, how do we still maintain the quality with a lot of quantity? There was an emphasis on quantity in the last eight years rather than quality. So there are a lot of horses in the state studs that that will not find a use in the breeding program going forward. But the 
the the real challenge is to maintain that identity of the Polish Arabian horse. You know, for the last 30 years in Europe, the Polish Arabian horse is identifiable by um, four major things, really. You know, it's, um, it's great bodies, really strong, high scoring, well balanced, um, useful bodies, better feet and legs than the vast majority of the horses in the ring amazing movement and true 20 type movement you know it's i think it's hard sometimes for people that have been giving generous judges that have been giving generous scores in the ring to then be confronted with the polish mares in the senior because they don't have any points left to give those mares right they move so well and this this presence and this confidence and this show attitude that these horses have in the ring um, exactly you recognize a polish type of horses from a distance and even even you know, it was really refreshing. I mean, in Poland, of course, they all, you know, Adelita looks like she's just stepped out of Janusz Podlaski circa, you know, 1965, because she fits in, and she's modern, but she fits everything that we expect from the Polish Arabian horse. But to see her in Prague put on a magnificent show and get the highest score amongst a really beautiful group of exotic internationally Bears owned by some high profile studs was really rewarding, not only for her to get those scores from a very well respected international group of judges, but also to have those same studs that with those really exotic horses who do very well internationally go, we like that mare, we'd like to have a mare like that, mm -hmm. gives us some to say, okay, we, this is, we know we need to maintain that, we need to maintain the bodies, the feet, the feet and legs, the, the movement and that show attitude. But the real question becomes, where do we find the science that we can use to incorporate those things on top of the mares that already have it without losing it? You know, where are the, where are the next monograms and gazals and Cahils and Lahibs and those horses that can come in and, and, and breed 25 to 30 mares at both state sets and leave an impact? That'll be the real challenge. And like Anya said, that's a challenge for every breeder worldwide to find mm -hmm. those signs that can have that and do that. But we're certainly, um, we're certainly interested in trying to find the best possible stallions, either with or without a Polish connection. A Polish connection always helps, but doesn't necessarily have to be a Polish connection like he proved and, and some of the other horses that have been used successfully in the past that you can create something special. The Polish mares are usually strong enough to imprint that Polish type and add the best of the stallion to the next generation. Mm -hmm. But now the challenge will be to find those stallions, to find the breeders, and the programs that are willing to work with Poland to bring those signs into the program with the idea that everybody benefits in the end, right? The more Adelitas that we can create in the world and those horses are in demand by other breeders, then the, the breed's in a better place. And that's essentially what we're hoping to do. We're grateful for the partnerships that were created in the past with those leases from Al-Shakab and from from the U.S. with Monogram and all those horses that change the breed, transform the breed for the better. Now we, we, we're, we're keen to try to find those alliances again. Mm -hmm. and, and, and letting people know um, the beautiful thing about Poland, um, I think you described it earlier, Jeff, one of the beautiful things about Poland is that that accessibility that you have when you're there. Like, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing hidden. The good, the bad, the mm -hmm. mediocre, you to see you know it's a, it's the best reading class in the world in, in terms of, um of seeing how the breed progresses and how generations change sometimes for the better sometimes not so much for the better and the honesty of those breeders to present that to the rest of the world is really a special mm -hmm. gift and so hoping you know that um that some of that that education on just spoke about earlier and that willingness to want to learn and cooperate is still out there in the world so that the polish arabian horse can continue to thrive at home and have a positive impact in the breed for generations to come the world's changed you know the world has definitely changed since anya and i started 30 plus years ago in poland um years for sure right and there's a if there's a power shift and a, uh, you know, an activity shift towards the Middle East, which is something that we celebrate, that's their horse, and we're thrilled to see that horse mm -hmm. succeeding in part of the world. It's something 
something I couldn't have anticipated when I started in this breed professionally as a, you know, as an animal science student back in the mid eighties, but it's, it's, it's our reality now. And we mm -hmm. the best way as international who were stewards of those horses for decades before to try to help them succeed with the best quality horses as well. But I th it's encouraging to know that the Polish Arabian still inspires people for the qualities that it possesses, right? Nobody expects to come. There's been lots and lots and lots of world champion and U.S. national champions and, and, and all Nations Cup champions and European champion mares that have come out of Poland, Phillies, Stallions, Colts, you know, that are not what people would consider ultra exotic, but the sum of their parts makes them, you know, the best examples of what mm -hmm. the breed can be. And I'd like to all rem remember that it's those sum of the parts that matter more in the end than, than this emphasis on something that may or may not be a fad in our breed and may or may not reflect the true desert mm -hmm. type that inspired people to pull those horses out of the desert centuries before. And don't you think that this is a kind of blessing for uh, breeders all over the world that having Poland as a never ending experimental field <laughs> and at three years yeah. in the three big groups, which never happened again in any places, they can learn on somebody's faults or learn on somebody's yeah. success. They can see what what kind of combination works or doesn't. So that this is, for me, it's a unique chance mm -hmm. also. I agree. You don't have to convince me. It's one of the reasons that the, that the breeders tours that we organized, used to organize, were such a, such, so well attended mm -hmm. and so um, popular is because people couldn't realize people were, were eager and just thirsting to find and understand how breeding works. I think people have it in their idea because have it in their mind because Poland's produced so many wonderful horses over the years and has been on the, at the top of the breed that it's just something easy to do that obviously, you know, obviously Emmy Grazia just just pops out amazing horses on a on a regular every year. It's the next fantastic world champion. And then when you go and you look at the record of even the best breed mares, it's it's not and even the full siblings sometimes it's not always an easy thing to do. So education wise, I think that's what that what that's what makes Poland special. It's been encouraging for me to see the support that still exists for Poland and its horses and its people. And it certainly has brought us together as an international community in a really special way in the in the three plus decades that I've been involved. And I hope to see it survive and thrive as long as it possibly can. So it's a it's a privilege, it's a huge responsibility to be back involved, as I know Anya and oh. and and Modic both feel, or all three feel, you know, as well as the the extremely capable group of leadership or the leadership groups that are in place at, at both state studs and, you know, with the support of the government now and all of those things. And so, but it, um, it's a privilege, but it's, it's a daunting, it's a daunting task <laughs> for, for us all to try to do the best that we can for the breed and the horse and the programs. Mm -hmm. and it is. There's no doubt about it. Feel that we feel that at, burden's not the right word, but the responsibility weighs heavily on our souls and on our psyches, I will say that. Well, guys, believe it or not, we've been chatting for an hour. So uh, <laughs> is there any, <laughs> is there anybody have any closing thoughts or revelations? I, I greatly Well, uh, this uh, Polish horses and the Polish breeding program is special and amazing because 33 years ago, this program brought to Poland a Canadian guy uh, who is now sitting with us. Uh, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It, 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 thank you, Anya, for saying that. But it, it, it has brought so, I mean, I wouldn't have known either one of you had it not been for the Polish Arabian mm -hmm. Horse. So it's a privilege to, it's, it's been a privilege to be involved with this breed for as many years as I have. But the greatest privilege of that experience has been to be in, 
a part of poetry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. And play a small, very small role in helping it succeed and advance. Be there for other generations to enjoy after after. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up there. That so. Thank you for joining us. You can log off anyway. I'm going to sign off and um, thank you all that um, have they joined have us. Already cooked a dinner for <laughs> the hour. Well, I mean, it's a long time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I feel really privileged. Thank no. you guys. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for joining and spending the time today. So that's going to be it for Insider News. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Jervis Insurance. We really appreciate that. We couldn't do it without you. And I'm Jeffrey Winterstein for Arabian Insider. Until we see you again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.